call this meeting to order the Brookfield Select Board at 6.30. It's May 16th at 6.15 p.m. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. We don't have any announcements, and uh, who's going to do the pleasure of, of my old job? Oh, the girl <laughs> and the warrant stuff? So, do you want to do it? I mean, I can read Just it read off. It off. I, haven't, I haven't actually you reviewed them yet, but um, did you? Sorry. Yeah, I did. I already signed it. Okay. So the current assigned warrant, so the FY2423 payroll for $198,565.23. FY 2423 AP warrant for $83,340.79, and there's no withholding warrant. And do we know why there's no withholding warrant? Yeah, for administrative with the treasurer, it was easy. it's easier and quicker if they just do one per month. Per month. Okay. Oh, okay, so they're putting both payrolls on, one, on a single warrant. Right. As long as the accountant is cool with it, I'm cool with it. Yeah, they all seem fine with it. Um, so we'll start with the warrant and fire through the warrant. I'm assuming I'd like to not go through each of them. If we just want to kind of talk about the ones we have questions or concerns with and then just kind of blanket them. Okay, especially them, for, the, for the ones that are pretty stupid. So um, let's take a look at this real quick. So. One is annual report, two is, uh, is uh, do the financial business of the town, three is prior year bills, which I think is a no-brainer, um, four is the water surplus, which is basically the water department doing what they need to do for capital, uh, ambulance is a standard one every year, uh, both, both five and six are ones that are just the standard budget process uh, for the ambulance. Um, there was additional carryover from this year that has to be voted in Article 4. Um, does it, will anybody have any comments or have any concerns about Article 8, 9, 10? Let's just take it 1 yeah. through 10, okay? Because I think those I, are I pretty I have a couple. I, I have, I'm good with 8, but number 9, I have questions. On. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion that we support Articles 1 through 8 of the current warrant in its standing format and number Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Yes. All right. Aye. All right. So go. All right. So Article 9, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer of borrow sum of money to purchase breathing air compressor for fire department or take any action relative there too. Um, and expecting it to be an $82,000 motion out of free cash. Mr. Chafee, your questions? Yeah, I, I met with Peter. I looked at the compressor. I haven't seen the service records yet. I would like to see the service records regarding it. And I, after speaking with Peter, he says it's working fine, but he doesn't know how much longer it's going to keep working. I asked him about the possibility of mutual aid in filling the canisters. He didn't feel that it was possible, but I spoke to other fire departments and they said that they would be, that's something that, that could easily be shared. So for an $82,000 expenditure, when we have a compressor that's still working, I would like to kick the can down the road a little farther with that. So I have a recommendation about that. Okay. Um, not sure it's going to make the year. I recommend that we put it in the old repair replacement account for $82,000. Then in the event that it fails, it only requires a vote of the Board of Selectmen to go ahead and replace that equipment. But if we don't spend it, we don't spend it, and that money is there to earmark for some other equipment replacement throughout the year. I'm good with that, uh, and, I, and I think if I had 
known that and spoke to the fire chief about that, I think he would probably be in agreement. And I'd like yeah. to, I'd like to be able to speak to him about that again. And I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Because that way the money is there. Yeah. Because we, we could, we could never speculate how long it's going to last. Right. right. It could, I mean, it could, it could last a day, tomorrow. or it could last exactly. three years. Yeah. You know, but because it's such a big like that. item that I would like. Yeah. To, so I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. So what I would say is that we would change the wording there would be to raise appropriate transfer borrow sum of money uh, to... So are we actually going to change? We would what actually this? have to change this, right? So we would have to change the article to represent a sum of money to... Um, uh, how, how have we done that before? And is the advisory going to have to hear what we're saying with yeah. this? Yeah. Are, they, are, they even are you guys in session? Okay. We're talking about making a change to one of the articles. Yeah, it's 6.15 for the working meeting. The 7, the seven o'clock on the postcard is for the pre formal presentation around yeah, the budget. Just tell me what's on the website. So I what it, was. it says 6.15. Yeah, it's yeah. 6.15. Yeah. Yeah. So they're legal to, to, to form. Yep. Yep. And the presentation won't start till 7. This is working out some of the details. All right. Do you want to reiterate to them what we want to do? Well, uh, have you guys... All right, so Article 9, uh, Mr. Chafee had spoke with the fire chief uh, regarding the compressor, which is still working, okay. but he's not sure for how much longer. Okay. Um, initially, his proposal was just to take it off because um, he felt that, the worst case scenario, they could fill bottles in other towns. Well, I want to clarify you. I asked him if that was a possibility. He did not like that. So I, I, I'm not, I want to make sure we don't put uh, we misspeak. Yeah. No, I, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so we asked him about that. And Chief wasn't a fan, right? Especially when we don't have any full time fire folks and, and the logistics. And it would of happen doing that. during a incident. That right. was his concern. So, yeah. it, so um, my recommendation was instead of funding explicitly for the compressor, that we put enough money in the fleet repair replacement account so that if it dies six months into the year, the select board has the capability of voting that money, just the select board with, with, with a consultation to you all to go pay for the compressor. But then if we don't spend the money, and, and then we have it still there for our following year. Okay, I'm sorry, Bob's thing, but please. Then, but, I have to tell him what's going on. Yeah, <laughs>
did a number of years ago out of that account. No, because you're voting it as an article, but it's it, once it's in that article account, it's, it's left to the board to select the board to decide how to spend it. It was specifically structured that way a number of years ago. Yep, if we don't spend it, it can still sit there without it rolling back over to free cash. Yeah. Try to just go through everything we don't have a conversation on first and then go back to the stuff that we do have a conversation on. Um, so 13 and 14 we skipped over for further discussion. Um, and we just, we just voted through 27 to support. And then we had a question on 28, so we were setting that aside for now. Uh, Article 29. Uh, Setting up a uh, shade tree revolving fund. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, setting up um, that was uh, adopting mass general law for shade trees. Thirty is all of our revolving funds. Uh, Thirty-one 
is uh, basically authorizing us to um, look into getting a property for senior centers. Uh, 32. Relative to the platform lift, we know roughly, and we know what we have currently is not enough. So this is just putting more in there, so we don't know what we're asking for yet. Well, the the amount that the amount that we were going to ask for was seventy two thousand. Oh, it's on the next page. Sorry about that. Yep. And that's, that would get, between what's already been voted and that amount, gets us to just about enough for an elevator, especially if we get some matching funds on a grant. So it puts us at like just a, they had some rough estimates. For an some, elevator. Some, no, some ROMs for it. For an elevator, if we don't go to the basement with the elevator, between what's already voted and that 72K, it's at the very low end of being able to put an elevator in that does first and second floor. Okay. Uh, and then if we got grant money, it would lower the cost of the town. We have the money to purchase the structure. Yeah. So, so I can't um, then uh, 33. 33. And then it looks like we're removing 34 through mm -hmm. right, we did. 36. Because we, we com didn't we combine we that to those. a single technology yep. upgrade? Yep. Can I ask, just because I have not had a chance to meet with you guys prior to this, other than last night, but the, the 80000 for the alarm system, how did that get started? What, what, what precipitated that? Because that would be in 120 plus years with nothing. Well, okay. How did we... Because if, if we're going to, if we're going to reoccupy the second floor, um, we have to... Modernized fire alarms. We have nothing in the right. building. Okay. So if we're going to start using it as a public meeting space the way it was used 50 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't that long, believe right. it. it wasn't that long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you, you have to I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Is that if we're going to start having large groups in there, we need to bring it into code compliance okay. for the fire alarms. And, and that's what it costs. I was just wondering if it was insurance demanded or if. And, and probably when, we, when we do that, will we get a break? Yeah, we should. We probably should. Um, so but we, we probably need to ask for whatever we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you. So, excuse me. Uh, that's for upstairs. We're looking for a fire alarm, right? Is that what's going on? Upstairs and down. Upstairs and down. In that state mandate to meet the code because we're going to have access to the second floor? If we start using it for public gatherings, like state you, law requires that we do that. It's 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 required, right? I don't know. I'd have to check, but that was my understanding. The chief has been requesting the, the chief has been requesting it for years, associated with if we're going to put the second floor back into use for things like town meeting, that we need to to get a hardwired fire alarm system installed. I just so want to I make sure it's a state code thing that's 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 pushing this. You know, I understand safety. You know, oh, oh I so safety's not that important. I understand safety, but it only matters if the state tells me I have to be safe. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay hey, I don't agree with that. I, okay. So so again, I work in an overregulated industry. Yes, you're part of the government. I understand that. So you're part of the government too, I my know, friend. That's so. why I'm in government okay. to prevent okay. excess. Okay, so I, I don't think trying to ensure that we have an appropriate fire alarm system if we're stuffing all the people that care about what happens. I'm just making sure meeting. that it's up. You know, the code requires it. I have no idea. Well, shouldn't you do that as a select person? So shouldn't you do some research on that? Isn't that part of your job? You haven't done that. No, because I actually trust the experts that are telling ah, us that okay. we need that. Just making sure. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I'm just asking the question. I want some answers. All right. So, whether it's required by the state or not, I support it. Do you want to check whether it's required by the state before you support it? I'm not, I'm, no, I'm not totally 
I would like to know what our discount to our insurance would be. Like if it say, I, I don't even know how much we're paying for insurance. dollars a year to have something like that. And in, and in less than 20 years, it's paid for itself, then I'm totally in support of it. But I'm also, I would also be concerned with the, what it would cost us for a deductible of rebuilding an in-town hall. And if it's saved it, I, there's a lot of reasons that I would go for it. One life? I wouldn't live in a house without fire alarms. Right. Where it was I mean, I was going to say, do you have fire alarms in your house? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm, not, I'm not sleeping in the town hall. Right. I, 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 right. I get it. Well, one of the things that is, I could easily do is check that this is code required. So I think it is important when the suspicions coming up now, it's probably going to come up. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. yeah, and I'm not saying we should research it. I'm just saying is that we're, we're basing it on you know, a, a, an explicit request based on going back and using the town hall at full population. Mm -hmm. As soon as it becomes a gathering place for the general public, all the departments go to the So I'm mostly in favor of it, but you can you can outvote me easy and say that it's oh, it doesn't matter. You know, it means that there is an outvote. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm mostly in favor, but I would like to, and, and I'm at a, I'm deficient because I'm so new and so right. right. yeah. I haven't had any right. change, so. But so I mean, we can br we can bring it up in you know, the Right. Neutral. So I mean, technically, we only need to post it a week prior. So I think we have one more meeting before then. So we okay. want to not post that one tonight. No, we need like, to get this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. To go. yeah. So if you think it needs to be. But we still have time. If, I, if, if I have any reservation. No, I'm supporting it. If I have any reservation, I'll bring it up at the town meeting. So yeah. uh, I don't yeah. recommend it. Yeah. Okay. Right? Fair enough. So, um, Any other questions? Um, all right. So we're fine through 33. Thanks. 37. Any questions regarding the article currently known as 37? Yep. 38. 38. 39. I thought it was actually the accountant because it was coming out of Narcan money from the that's the, or the, coming out of the opioid money for the town, and it's the only thing our town's eligible for. So in order to spend that down, I thought it was actually the accountant that recommended it. For the yard. Well, special accountant that set up for the opioid. It has. So that's what it's coming out of. So. Because, and, and you'll notice it's actually the phrasing of the article, Ron. It says from the opioid settlement funds. So. Um. Article so, 39. So 39, I haven't had a chance to look at that plan. Does anyone know more about it than so, so functionally, they're putting, they're replacing the septic system exactly where it is, but to do that, it crosses over the, the town easement uh, for that street. So, it's so, so is it in the front line of Lower River Street, or, or yeah. is it in the front line of River? I think it's on the front line of Lower River. Yeah. See, and I thought it was Upper River, where the driveway is, where they park all the cars. So oh, the upper, right. upper, yeah. if it is, we went through the whole plans and everything. With them. My concern with the Upper River, if we to fix that road and widen it in any way, then I would have some concern with some of that septic system. That being my business, so that. But for now, I'm going to just go with board to support it because I should have taken the time. To well, and there's no, and there's no, there's no plan to my knowledge with either the town or the state to widen up the river okay. in like the next three or four years. So I just want to make sure we don't get in a situation where we let them put it into the easement and then we can do well, make any. If we do widen the road and now we cut into that subject system, then we own it. So that would be my only <coughs> But other than that, I, I well, know it's, it's, it's in 
failure. So if we remove, he, he's, yeah. the reason we get a new plan is because he knows it's in failure, right? So if we cut the road now, we're not giving him a brand new septic because it's already in failure. But if he does put a new septic and we cut into it, we need to modify it. I think it's on us at that point. So I know he's really restricted by space. Yeah. So I'm mostly in favor of it. I just want to take a look at the plan briefly and give my two cents. But other than that, I know he has very limited options. Right? So I don't want to, I wouldn't want to see him thus refuse that and him have to put in a tight tank that he has to spend hundreds every month to use his facilities. But I, I, I will immediately check it. Yeah. Mostly supported this you, part. Can you reach out to um, Bill? Yeah, and uh, ask him to get get a copy of the plan back to us. I mean, we should have it from the original right. meeting. When was this original? Six or Last eight year. Ago. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And a very similar situation with the Lake Road property. So I have less concern there where the other <coughs> abutters have septics in that area already. And, and they were literally you know, forced into that situation where that's a the only spot for them. I know we're not going to change that road down there. We have basically the abandoned part of the portion of the road and the septic stayed with that. Right? So there's plenty of room when they, when they installed the septic system down on the south side of the property. They crowded it towards the abandoned portion of the road versus the one on River Street with not oh, okay. you know, setbacks near the that. Just because we have other things that we need no, to. No, we do. We're running out of time. Right. Oh, we want to skip. Oh, we want to skip. No, I'm going to skip. All right. All right. Let's see if the town will vote to transfer us to some money. So, 41 OPEB. Here's the thing. 
do we want to recommend or not any of the citizen petitions ones or just I, just I, not I, comment? I, I, I think I'd like to make a motion at the board. Well, they're going to make the motion. Yeah, let the residents know it's a citizen's so, petition, and I don't have it. Yeah, yeah, so honestly, for our purposes, um, our obligation to recommend is in the point. So I'd make a motion that we. And then we have the last one. Okay. And then Article 49, the longevity, um, longevity stipend, and changing the personnel bylaw to actually put that into the bylaw. So I'll give you a motion to approve. Well, 
I know in their budget they have additional money if they had if that backhoe failed, they could literally rent one. They have money in their budget that they could go and rent one on the short term until we could either get another annual town meeting together or a special town meeting to do something. So there's multiple options and I don't really know put anything aside for it. I think they have enough money in their budget and cloth to take care of it as far as repairs. That's my opinion. We haven't historically had a lot of leftover funds. Yeah, they're is in chapter 90 right now for the highway department. Can we get through what we have to get through for the warrant? This right. is from the select board meeting All and right. then we're going into the other. Yeah, Good you enough. can ask Thank that you. during the uh, uh, Or in the intermission. Okay. <laughs> It, 
what may be wrong with it. I don't think the transmission's got any problems with it. I don't think the motor's got anything. The front end, rear end. There's a couple I of pins that are egg shaped and is, uh, in the wire and harness. It didn't get burnt, but it got touched by the torch welding and, yeah. and they did repair the wires. So there's a some, if something has to be line board and rebushing and new pins and stuff, that's that cheap. Point. Yeah, and it's not for that. Point. Right. That's cheap money to have it done. Yeah. You know, I'd rather spend five to ten thousand dollars on it and fix back up a how it is. Mm -hmm. but, but it's not to that point where it even needs to. Yeah. Well there's one functions my guess as it as it should. There's a little more slot. Right. The tightest thing we do with it is dig a grave down at the but there's no urgency to rush. Take your time. There's the backhoe I started with in business thirty years ago was a hundred times worse. Right? So I made a list. So I'll make a motion to remove articles 13, 13 and 14. Second. Any discussions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah. All right. So, so we, we, um, we and so, 
Tom Regan so graciously going to go through the budget. Um, he had worked a lot with advisory through it throughout the year, so we just thought it would be easier to have him continue with the uh, presentation because he probably has better answers than any of us do. So, Tom, the floor is yours. I'm going to need a minute. Okay. <laughs> faces here that I don't see all the time so for uh, I'm gonna do a little bit for those of us who are town government junkies um, oh I got strong okay. so the way the budget setting works is the town has three has a three-legged stool for revenue we have local receipts we have state aid and we have the tax levy and effect and then with that we fund the operating budget and so what happens is the Local receipts and the state aids are known going in. And so effectively, once we set our budget, the levy makes up everything that local receipts and state aid don't cover. So if we add, so from any certain level of the budget, if we add $50,000 to the budget, then we add, then we need to levy another $50,000. That means another $50,000 coming into the town through the tax bills. Conversely, we drop the budget by $50,000, that's $50,000 less going in there. So I know a lot of people can focus on their tax rate, but fundamentally, the driver of the tax bill is the operating budget. And then the second thing that affects your tax bill is how much your property is worth compared to the rest of the town. The tax rate is the dependent variable. It's set so that the town collects enough money to be able to fully fund its budget after the uh, state aid and local receipts are done. So uh, this, this is a diagram of where our budget is now. So those numbers are accurate. We have a little over a million dollars in local receipts. We have $3 million in state aid, though the state giveth, the state taketh away. Of our $3 million of state aid, $500,000 is um, stuff that does not touch the, the town, can't apply to the operating budget. It goes directly to the school, the school choice money, or uh, library grants are the two ones that come to mind. So effectively, that's a net $2.5 million contribution to the operating budget. And then after that, there's our levy. And right now, the levy is coming in at, I can't read this, just under $7 million. Uh, I'm sorry, that is our maximum levy capacity. I'm not going to get into how to decide the maximum levy capacity. Um, for this discussion, that is our maximum levy. Our operating budget is 10.5. 482 million, which gives us about $60,000 a headroom in the levy capacity. So that's where we are now. And we will eventually walk through all the budget, but I'm on, I want to tell a story and set, sort of give everyone some context here. So this is our budget broken up by group. What we've always done is in the budget, 
we have the general government group, we have the public safety group, the school group, and all sorts of, all the departments and such that belong to that group go in there. And so this is showing how much each group has been over the last three years. So you can see the school, and you can see the school is, by a large margin, the longest number here. And then we have debt and assessments, and that's mostly assessments, and on down. And so I'm not gonna dwell on these numbers too much. If you have a question about it, let me know. But we've got, I wanna give people some feel for how much each group contributes to the budget. And then this is another way of looking at it. Um, this is each group as a percentage of the budget. I'm sorry. This is absolute amounts. These are percentages. So you've got the school at 55% of the budget. So this just shows you, gives you a better idea of what percentage it is. And then the, the graph on the right shows how much each group grew in fiscal year 24 and 25. And what I want to point out is in fiscal year 25, almost every group grew less than in fiscal year 24. Um, I believe the only exceptions are public safety and water. And public safety one is going up because it's a new contract year and we have to fund the higher contract and we're just dealing with market rates uh, and the union. And water's going up. I'm not sure why water's going up. I think it's because we took electricity out of the water department's budget in 24. Yes, I think you're yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have a $500,000 increase in the budget. This graph shows which group is getting what part of that increase. And so you can see again, the school is a big part of the increase. Um, I don't believe anyone from the school committee is here. I have talked to the school committee about this. Um, some of the increase is due to uh, the contractually obligated um, raises and um, step increases and uh, cost of living raises. But my recollection is a big chunk of this increase is they've had an increase in special education placements that they've not been, that they cannot serve those students in Brookfield Elementary, so they have to go to other schools. I believe most of these are going to other schools within district, but if they're going to a program in Brimfield, then we have to transfer money to Brimfield for them to educate our students, the, the, our residents, the children of the people that live in town. So that is the big driver of the increase in school. It's not that they have a big, that the teachers got a big payday. It's not that Dr. Hoshman got a big payday. It's not that they are getting around to putting a new roof on the building. It is state mandated special education. And then you look around and you can see every, you can see how much everything else is in there. And so, and the reason I want the reason I want to show this is, it's a big increase in the the budget is increasing by a significant amount this year, and so. If we want, to, it's like, if we're gonna try and deal with it by reducing our, by reducing public works, it's like you could level fund public works completely and you wouldn't put a big dent in the increase that's going up. So I just want people to understand what's driving these increases. And here's my favorite chart. This shows, this shows the breakdown. The inner ring is by group, and then the outer ring breaks it down by department. So you can see the schools broken out by elementary and regional school, and then that little sliver at the end is uh, transportation, which isn't much. And that's the biggest chunk. After that is debt and assessments, most of which is assessments. Um, for those not familiar, assessments is health insurance, Worcester County retirement for our employees, and general insurance. I think we have one or two other things in there, but those are the those are the three big ones in assessments. And then we've got public safety. Say about two thirds of public safety is police. After that, it's fire. Everything else after that's tiny. I mean, you guys can read this, and I have handouts of all this for afterwards. Uh, yes, Ms. Coughlin. Um, and this is just because it's late breaking news that came through yesterday. Did you get the thirty-two thousand yeah. dollar reduction? I did. Okay. I was. Um, uh, I really wish Brad had shared that with me last night before I made these. So instead, he shared it with me this morning after when I said, "Oh, well, we let me show you what I did." At four o'clock, I think. Yeah. So. Let, me, let me show you what I did, Brad. He's there. You missed the thirty-two thousand dollars that the school took out of their budget. 
It's like, and then I sent it to, who did I send it to? And actually the handouts may, there, there may be one wrong number in there for the school. I think I missed updating it uh, in the handout and Deb Boyd pointed it out to me when I, after reviewing the, the copy of this I sent to her and she pointed out and so I corrected it in the online. Got it, thank All right. you. But thank you, yes. And then here in the table, we can see the, the actual numbers for each group. Are there any questions on the big picture? All right, so what I'm going to do next is, um, I want to go through and just discuss, go through each group one by one, um, where I'm gonna show department totals. I'm not planning to show the individual lines, like for the accountant, I'm not gonna show outsourced accountant expense. Um, I'm not gonna show accountant expenditure, like I'm not gonna show treasurer wages, treasurer as such. I'm, at this level, we're just gonna say, here's what the treasurer's office is getting. If there are any questions, either from the numbers up here or from, the, you have the detailed numbers in the handouts in front of you, everything that will be on the floor is in that handout you have. And we can talk to that. I just don't want to put that many numbers up on the screen. I put people asleep to no enough as it is. I don't need the extra numbers to make it easier. And so this is the one that I just, there are too many lines to make this very readable, but this is general government and I just wanted to, hi and the yellow highlights are the ones I wanted to call attention to, and here I want to call attention to because general government is going down ever so slightly this year compared to last year. But are there any questions on any of the uh, departments in general government? Yes, Jeff? I think it might be helpful, Tom, if you could explain the, uh, the drop in the treasurer number because that was a key discussion okay. point that we had you know, over the several months. Um, yes, uh, I, uh, I will, if, if the board would like to speak, if the select board would like to speak, I, no, 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 I, I don't need to speak now, but if there's any, after I speak, if there's anything you'd like to say, or if you want to raise your hand and say, no, 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 that's not right, please go ahead, because I don't want to, I don't want to incorrectly speak for you. But um, since I was in the discussion, I do feel that I can answer that question, is that the uh, board, uh, the select board reduced the uh, treasurer department budget on the expectation that um, we would explore a part-time treasurer, that um, our, so our research indicates that, uh, the research at the time indicated that other towns were able to work with a part-time treasurer, and that was something that we would want to try and do also. But other than that, the, the select board was, I'm sorry, the general government was, didn't have a whole lot of changes in it. And then I did put over he, in the, uh, the right-hand side how much, it's, how much it's increasing both in absolute dollars and as a year-over-year -year percentage. And then finally on the far right, it's just how much of the increase of the fiscal year 25 increase it represents. And I think on this one, it's very small. Yeah. Uh, just, just one other point. The um, advisory committee uh, recommended that we reduce the reserve fund, which we control, from 35 to 30, only because we felt since we level funded, or we recommended legal expenses be level funded, um, we, we felt that we would need a little bit more cushion, possibly depending on what happens in the town in the next year. So that will be one difference you can see between when you look at the detailed um, differences between the, the select board and the advisory board. Uh, in general, there's not that many differences. I think we different, you know, difference on um, wage increases and, and a couple of other things, but not, not too many. So um, in, in effect, we're, we're in agreement for the most part with uh, the select board's recommendations. Yeah, I would say, I, Jeff, one of the main differences um, systemic between what the select board recommended and what the advisory recommended was that 
the select board recommended a COLA of 4% and the advisory committee recommended a COLA for the town employees of 3.2%. And other than that, I think the general expectation was we would be aligned. I think I missed, somehow I missed updating your technology number. I, I think you guys did vote to adjust with us at the May 2nd meeting and I think I just missed that update. So, well, that, that and, and, the, and that will be reflected in the final. I'm gonna to talk to Sarah and make sure that, that, that those that, errors get scrubbed out. That, that's yeah. fine, the technology was just because uh, mm -hmm. the, the technology items were pulled out into warrant articles and that's, mm -hmm. that's what reflected the difference we didn't, that wasn't updated, so. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I don't think there's any other major differences, but I think the other, other thing that um, townspeople, hopefully they will, they will recognize is that when we started the budget process and we started uh, December, January, uh, at that point we were over the levy limit. So we had to really analyze both the select board and the advisory committee and, and go back and talk to all the various departments so that we were gradually able to uh, bring things down and then the, the revenue numbers went up slightly and I'd say we're not rolling the dice, but there is a little bit of a um, possibility of things going one way or the other. But um, it, it, it's been a very difficult six or eight months. I mean, I've, I've been on the advisory committee, I think, for seven years, and this is the first one where we started out above uh, the levy limit had to bring it way down. So. Um, any, any questions? That's sort of the strategy that we, that we took. We're trying to look at things very, very, um, what, precisely whatever, every, every dollar counts. It was, and normally we wouldn't want to reduce the reserve fund, but we did, and other things uh, uh, happened. So um, that's just sort of the general overall strategic approach. I mean, Tom, I mean, you put everything together here very nicely. This is the first time we've had it explained with nice PowerPoint um, figures, numbers, everything else. And this has been a goal of the advisory committee for five years at least to put it in this situation and have people attend prior to the town meeting, where the town meeting, everyone is it's just, you know, so much going on. It's very difficult. But here at least we can sort of speak down a little bit if you want to. Thank you, Jeff. So after town gov after general government, it's public safety. Um, yeah. Uh, fire and police. Uh, yeah, Mike. Yeah, I've got a few questions on general government. Oh, sure, please. Right. I'll go back. Yeah, I was just going over all this, and I wanted to go over a few things with the advisory committee on some of their recommendations on some of the. Uh, so some of um, some of our numbers are wrong, so we can go over the updated. That's not what. So, Mike, do you have some, some updated of, numbers yeah. to share with me? Yeah, I do. If you're talking about this packet, yeah, with the advisory, yeah. yeah. Would you like to do that after Tom's presentation? We can have this discussion. Sure, that's up to you. Well, well what specifically did you want to cover? Yeah, do you want? Well, yeah. we've got a couple. Of course, all of you know, last year there was a couple people that on the floor got some raises. It was unexpected to some, and I know many of you were Taken unhappy back. with the results. It was the uh, library director and myself. So what I'm looking at here is there's some discrepancies. What I see is the library director. Who got a big raise last year, like me, got like a 3% raise, and I didn't, and that's fine, but I just want some, uh, I, believe, I want an explanation. I believe she's contract. Is she on a contract? I believe. So I believe it's in her contract that she gets. Yeah, library should be in yeah, contract. Yeah, she used to be. Yes. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah. I believe the library trustees signed a contract with the library director and that it was, uh, I mean, subject to funding by the town yes. at town meeting. When did that contract happen? I don't know. I believe the contract was signed ahead of last year's annual town Correct. meeting. Thank you. Correct. That is my recollection. So the 3% increase was in the contract in prior contract. to the town meeting. Yeah, so it states COLA oh. in her contract. That's, that's something. I believe, I believe, but I know that there is a contract, so that is why she got an increase. Okay. In, in, in that particular situation, um, the same discussion was, was had as with your situation, but since that was a contractual but you were obligation. We contractual were obligation. Right. Yes. Well, I'm glad we had this discussion. <laughs> All 
All right, any other questions on general government? All right, public safety, police and fire are the big ones, police and fire are the big ones, and uh, police is going up, um, actually police is going up because we, in fiscal year 24, we level funded them uh, since fiscal year 24 was the first year of their new contract, and that new contract is still pending. And so the uh, decision of the select board at the time was that we needed to put money in the contract in order uh, in the budget in order to fund the contract that we expect to be that we were expecting to be completed sometime um, either late in fiscal year 24 or early in fiscal year 25. Um, I know that the select board recently had a meeting about that. It um, looks like that's moving forward again. And so, and I, I'm not going to ask you guys to talk to the. And so, I'm not going to ask you guys to talk about that negotiation. I'm just saying that's why there's a big increase in police. Is we're expecting the contract to be signed. We are expecting that when the contract's signed, we are going to have to start paying them at their fiscal at the whatever the contract specifies. I'm going to, for discussion purposes, we'll say let's say that they the contract signed on June 30th at the end of the fiscal year then that means that they will get paid their contractual fiscal year 25 rate starting in fiscal year 25. We, the town will also owe them back pay for fiscal year 24. The budget can support this because, and I discussed this with the, with the accountant, is that the wages account can be deficit spent. The town will, the town is expecting to have enough free cash to fund the float and then at the end of the year, money can be transferred, but either we can have, if we need to, we can have a special town meeting to adjust the budget, or we can do in, at the end of year transfers in order to fund, in order to cover the back wages from fiscal year 24. It is going to have to be paid. The police will earn that money based on their contract. But our, the thought was we could not leave that account level funded again for second year. It would leave the account underfunded. Uh, yes, Rich. What happens if we had a police officer leave in that time frame that they do the back pay? Are they still entitled to that pay retroactive yeah. even though they don't work? I, so. I, I don't know, but I would expect so since they worked at that time and the, I, I would expect so. But it would, we, would, we would only owe them the difference between what we paid them at their fiscal year 23 rate and what the contract specified they should have received in fiscal year 24. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So we're just waiting for the, we're waiting for the police contract shoe to drop. Any schedule on that, uh, Tom? I would defer to the uh, I would defer to the select board members on that. I believe they recently had a meeting on that, and but I don't know if they have anything they can say publicly. We do not have a timeline. No. <laughs> All right. Any other questions on public? Sorry. Any other questions on public safety? All right. Schools. And we already talked about this. We can see the uh, we can see the increases in. The elementary school. The regional school actually went down this year. And I believe that was primarily due to Brookfield having a smaller proportion of students in the regional schools compared to the other towns. Yeah. I know there have been other years our enrollment stayed steady and our assessment went up. This year, I don't know where our enrollment went, but our assessment went down. Yes, sir. Hey, on the uh, school, is it? Anybody ever really looked into it to see what kind of money they have left over toward the end of their year? You know what I'm asking? Their excess and deficit account? Yeah. If we give them $4 million, what do they have left out of that $4 million at the end of the year? My understanding is that money in the operating budget sweeps out and goes to free cash at the end of the no. year. Not for the not school ours. system. Not, 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 to, not to our free cash. Oh, really? School okay, school that's school what I, I learned. Yeah. The school, the school not, funds school. roll to the E&D account. <laughs> okay. So if, they're, oh, if, they're, if we underfund yeah. them, then they can pull on those funds that are swept into the E&D okay. account. Right. I, knew, I, knew they had, I knew they had retained school choice money. I did not realize that they had another source of retained funds. Yeah. 
Is that that's something? This is something that I've been asking for years, and nobody can get the answer for it. School committee. They they beat around the bush so much they won't give it to you. Well, mm -hmm. Herb, that that boy will be at the public meeting on June sixth. So. All right. I specific, we all specifically asked her to come to explain. So. Because I know there's been a fair amount of money in the elementary school and quite a bit in the high school. Yep. That's you, Herb, you might also know one of our school committee members. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> Can't get her to tell you the answer, huh? <laughs> Trust me. Uh, uh, Don. Uh, I, don't, I don't see any reference to the school choice money. Do they report that as well? Um, the school choice money goes directly to the school. They, and my understanding is that it is they, they have discretion in using it. Uh, this year they are using some school choice money for capital projects, and they are also using some, some school choice money to offset their operating costs and decrease the amount that they are requesting of the town. So if they, as an example, if they had put $150,000 of school choice money to their operating expenses, or assuming they put in, assuming they had put $150,000 towards their operating expenses and asked for this much, had they not asked for that much money, then that number would go up by $150,000 and it would go up to about $4 million instead of $3.843. So they, the, they do, can use the school choice to reduce what they ask of the town. So is that number reported to where is how much they have in the school choice? I do not know. I'm I'm sure it can be found and it's uh, Jeff yeah. Jeff I'm seems to be sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but not Dead Boy has that the packet that we received that we, we looked at did not have that number, but it did when we asked Dead Boy specifically, she said that the amount of money that they were putting in, they increased their school choice money in the operating budget. It was $150,000 two years ago, $150,000 last year, $200,000 this year because they recognized the increase. I mean, that would have been up like 9 or 10% if they had to put that extra 50 in. That she said that was as much as they could put in whatever they had. So I think she has the number. We didn't see it, but I'm sure she might be able to tell you on the floor. Uh, but I know they're making a concerted effort. I mean, they, this is the first time in probably 10 years that they were a little bit hesitant to present the budget to us because they knew that we were where we were at. And so there was a lot of negotiation as far as uh, what uh, was, was possible. And um, at the end, we had that $32,000 decrease which was about in line with what we thought we might have to ask for them at some point. So I think it was a win-win situation. They, they came in good faith and negotiated, uh, you know, what their budget was. They knew it was hot. But it's not, as Tom said, there's not much that can be done with the special education situation. Marty? Tom, it's worth mentioning that the school also has an annual public budget meeting where, you know, they can, you know, tell everybody all the details of all that. Oh, I know. I went. Yeah. It's yes. More, more people ought to go. Yeah, and and for the um, well, uh, just for cl for clarity, the school board reviews a detailed budget that has a lot of line items, but by law, only a single the total comes to annual town meeting. If the town votes to fund the school at a lower level than they requested. The town can do that, but then it is up to the school to decide what cuts to make to conform to those cuts, to conform to that reduced funding. So the town floor cannot cut specific programs in the school. They can, the town, the floor can only reduce the funding and then the school, the administration through and through the elected school board would then make the decision as to how to um, conform to that reduced budget. Uh, but I think the question about how much retained earnings the school has is fair, and I may I may reach out to uh, Deb Boyd, and I also know the um, I also know the finance director there. She has two sons who do drama club with my oldest daughter. All right, any other question on school? All right, public works. Highway's gone up a little. We. Um, 
we have a new highway superintendent and the highway superintendent has a water I'm gonna get it wrong but they have a an water operators license and so they can um, assist the water department with matters and so we thought that was a, uh, a helpful thing and we think that uh, Pete was the best candidate available to us and so we're, we're happy I was happy that we were able to bring him on board any questions here feel free to look at the details I'm I'm not putting the details up on the screen but if you got a question about a detailed line this is the place to ask about it all right health and sanitation nothing terribly exciting is happening here slight increases although I do wonder why council on aging and veterans are under in the health and sanitation section rather than maybe culture and recreation because they go to the doctors a lot <laughs> That is a good answer, Mike. They go to the doctors a lot. Mm, right. Because we're trying to keep the community healthy by taking care of those oh. potentially underserviced groups. Oh, a, a, commu a community health angle by keeping keeping those populations healthy through programs aimed at them. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. I hadn't thought about yeah, that. Yeah, stuff in pickleball can't take care of. We're going to have a pickleball program. Oh, yes, we're going to have one in the Congo Church. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, culture and recreation. Anything there? All right. Debt and assessments. Assessments are going up. They always go up. They go up every year. And health insurance. Health insurance in Worcester County retirement. They are relentless. Marty, yes? Um, has anybody tried to work out the relationship between the retirement fund and COLA increases to say, you know, if you had a 3% COLA, what percent increase does that mean for the retirement fund? That goes, no. into, the, that goes into the actual calculation. That, that goes into that whole OPEB calculation. Right. So, yeah. and, and fundamentally, and, and this is where it gets kind of odd. Right, so we're putting away money for OPEB because we're supposed to fully fund the liability, even though we currently fully fund our, functionally fully fund our retirement liability out of our operational budget. So, um, but have we, have we looked at total cost of COLA raises and what it does to people's retirement? No, because the COLA raises are not based off of the the near-term or long-term cost of the town it's about ensuring that we are market competitive for quality people to provide services to the town so I mean we can argue over whether we should level fund for the next 10 years but by year three I don't know that we'd have anybody keeping the lights on so um, yeah and and Marty I would also say my brother's an actuary and I would say the answer is very complicated because it depends. The answer would, could change if an older town employee retired and was replaced by a younger one. And so since, since it's an actuarial driven calculation, you have to have details of the population that you're uh, calculating the, the effect on or the, that's subject to the effect. So I don't, I'm sure the actuaries could do it. I don't know how easily they could do it, and I don't know if they would do it if you, even if we asked nicely. <laughs> Figure it out. Yep. All right, and then water. I'm not sure why we have water here and not in public works, but it's always been there, and I didn't think it was my place to move it. Maybe because water, water brings in its own revenue and it's almost self-funding. No. I, I know it's not an enterprise fund because so it's on the budget and so their revenue comes in as local receipts and then their expenditures are here but they're but they're on the budget and so and I always felt that even even if, if they're on the budget then the public works might be a better section for them rather than dangling at the end I think it's because other municipalities have other utilities and typically those utilities are all budgeted together if they're not private enterprise so there's there's communities that have water, sewer, and electric that are all 
come under their their BBW. Oh, so this would be like this is the, the water's part of the municipal <laughs> utility section. They're just the only group. They're only the resident the only of that, that section. We, we're the only one. That's the only one that we have. So right. Since we, all of these categories are typically aligned on like the gas fee groups that the state buckets those accounts to. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's so that you can do community to community comparisons when you're looking at the DLS site. So this is split out because those those type of services are split out that way on the state site. Why they are bucketed that way is, okay. is something I haven't dug into. But we, we are conforming to the way it's done at the state level to allow, to facilitate comparisons across towns. That is a good enough answer for me. I like the idea of having our numbers comparable to other towns so we can understand if we're doing well or if we're not. Okay. And if we're not doing well, we work to do better. If we're doing well, we say, great job, everyone. Keep it up. And, and it's not so much well or not well, it's a, what does the community choose to spend its money on? Mm -hmm. So. All right, and so, and so that, that is any, are there any questions on the operating budget? Because after, because I was going to switch next to review the, uh, the warrant articles uh, that have money attached to them. I got one quick question. All right, I have a really long answer. Can somebody answer what the highway department has underneath the chapter 90 right now? No, but I'm sure it could be found out. <laughs> I'm curious. I'll find out. You mean for fiscal year 24 or for 25? Yeah. They, uh, well, they, chapter 90 money is not fiscal year specific. Right. Okay. So it, it, the money, if the money is available at the end of the year, it rolls over to the next year. So it's a question of how much do we have now or how much did we have a certain point in time in the past. Um, and yeah. that, as time goes on with Chapter 90, last time I knew, they only could roll it for three years. Then the state takes it back. Okay. So I'm just curious what they have, have in the account right now. I don't, I don't remember the exact number. I know Lori shared it with us at one of the meetings that we had leading up to the budget. I want to say there was only... Like residual from other years, not counting the 163 or so that we're getting for this year coming. I think there was only like 60 or 70 left. Oh, you have yeah, but that's, that's the expenditure, so that's only showing this current year. Yeah, that only that's that's yeah, not going to. Yeah, but no, but that's only showing for the current year. What Herb, I believe, is referring to is this probably stuff from years prior. It could be, yes. Right. Well, no, it's saying, it's saying that the fund balance is. Well, I think if you want to know what the actual answer is, you're going to have to call Mass DOT then to find out what No, what this Lori, has. Lori had a number on it. Yeah, I think Lori, the accountant Lori, would know how Lori much we had, have. Lori had a number on it. Well, she won't have the actual number. I can tell you that. Because they don't send it to the, to the uh, treasurer or anything like that. Right, but I think, I think Highway has been sending them what they send to the state. No. Okay. The, the state... The state allocates X amount of money for the, for all municipalities across the state. Right. All right. Yep. Last time I knew ours was just over two hundred and something thousand dollars a year. Well, we're not getting nearly that. We didn't get nearly that the last two years. We got like one hundred and sixty nine and one sixty three the last two years. Then something is not going on correctly because usually it doesn't reduce. Yeah. The, the state. Yeah. Yeah. Doing it. <laughs> yeah, so we but we have not gotten over two hundred in a number of years. Yeah. We should be getting a little bit more. Yeah, or I probably have that backwards. I think it was one sixty three last year and like one sixty nine. Yeah, I, I have notes from an April twenty seventh twenty second and part of the committee meeting. Just my notes say chapter ninety is one hundred sixty seven thousand. Which sounds like deep in was similar yeah. what you got. Yeah, so got. yeah, it All was right. somewhere in there. Is what, what we were getting this and year. That would be checked by someone else. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. Well, and actually, I have an email relative to what was this year's. I just don't know what the balance is left over from the prior year. Do you but wanna, I don't remember. What do you want to email now. Lori? So all of us don't email Lori? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to see if I have something from her because I thought she sent us something at, at some point. All right. Are there any more questions on the operating budget? Well, Tom, what's the magic number then? If that's the budget that goes through uh, to town, I, mean, I don't. Um, let's see. Which kind of which kind of magic are we talking about here? The 
Yeah, I think the first slide. Is Ooh, the tax rate. That is oh, the, uh, the tax rate. The, t the I am not touching. I am not Tim. I'm not touching that number with a 10 foot pole. I'm, I'm going to tell you why. We can know it exactly. Yeah. Well, what is the But I'm saying I think there, yeah, there's there's going to be the money levied against the town only, and then we know at least a snapshot of the assessed value in town, so we can actually at big picture understand a range of it. I can't imagine it change much from where it is because the budget hasn't been changed you can unplug overall. You need to. That's all. What was last year's total budget versus this year's? But we have a lot in the Yeah, the, old, from the, the total budget last year was 10. 10 last year's budget, 10.037 10, 10, 10. million, and we are 10.482. So that's an increase of about four hundred fifty thousand dollars, roughly. So now, that is now the reason. The, the issue. The thing is, I'm not. As I said before, tax. The tax rate is the most dependent variable in the equation. The number that we control in town meeting is the budget, and then the budget drives the levy. Now. The levy is used to decide, the levy says, how much money do we need to raise from all the property taxes? Now, now the assessor comes in and says, well, what's the property in town worth? If, I'm gonna use some round numbers. If we had a $10 million budget, and we had $100 million worth of property in town, then we would need to raise 10 cents for every dollar of property. That's not how the numbers really work, but I'm going with simple numbers. No, cool. And then, yeah. and, and, and but then the question becomes, how much you pay depends on, well, how much, how much of your house takes up that $100 million worth of property? If you have a $50 million estate in town, I'll tell you what, you're paying half the property taxes yeah, in but, town. But, but Tom, that's and, not the point. The point is we're all paying the same 15, 98, 1,000 this year. So no yes. what we and so our, my taxes are going to be different than someone else's, and I understand that piece. Right. But in terms of that math of the, uh, it's just again just understanding the range. Well, I, tell me I would say this. Need to, well, tell, tell me people need to understand if they want to do something uh, like some of the things that happened the last year's town meeting, things off the floor that caused the budget to go a little squirrely. They need to know the effects, right? You want X. Well, just understand your tax rate is going to go from fifteen ninety eight to sixteen oh two or whatever the number. But I, I, would say, I just remember a hundred grand equals about a dollar in the tax rate. See, that's the that's yeah. kind of the but the but, but again again hold on. It's, it's, I would oh, 50 cents. I would caution against looking at the tax rate because every year the assessed value yep. changes, yep. and so if your assessed value goes up, yep. but the budget doesn't change, then your tax rate will go down, but your tax bill will remain the same. I would say this. If the, if the levy goes up 5%, all else equal, tax bills will go up about 5%. Probably a little less because new growth's gonna take a little bit of the edge off of that. But all else equal, if we, if we spend 5% more and local receipts stay the same and state aid stays the same, then the levy's gonna have to go up 5%. And that means it's good. That's good. And that levy means it's going to show up in your tax bills. And that's the important part. It's not whether it's twelve dollars and thirteen cents per thousand or fourteen dollars and seventy nine cents per thousand. It's whether you're writing a check for one thousand, one thousand five hundred, or two thousand dollars every quarter to the tax collector. And so I'm not going to get into the mugs game of predicting tax rates. We don't have to. But do I will tell. But I will tell. But I will tell you that if the budget goes up five percent, then Look for your tax bill to go up about five percent. I think that's I think that's fair. And if someone feels differently, then let's discuss it. But I, I think that's that's the way I have learned to look at it. No, Tom, and, and I'm okay with that. Right? That's yeah. that's the range. That's, did, that's but, the number. But, but Tim, Tim, did, was so. But was that did that tell you what you wanted spoken to help people understand the impact of an increase in the budget on their pocketbook? Because I think that's what you're getting at. If they could do the relative simple math of 5% times, 105% times what I paid last year, mm -hmm. you would think they could, but some people aren't that 
quickly with the mass, right? So uh, uh, all I'm saying, if there's a simpler way to do it, which I think what you're saying is very simple, but whether we need to make it simpler or not, I guess it's just something to think through. Mm -hmm. I don't have an answer for it. I'm just saying. Okay. And then, ju and then, just one more thing is that is that I that I didn't know until a couple years ago, is that the tax rate is set in December. So we approve the budget in June, and then an estimated tax rate is sent, and we pay our property taxes in July and October, at, based on those estimated tax rates. Then we do our re we do our recap. The assessor does that with the accountant, treasurer, and the tax collector, and then the permanent tax rate is set, and then the tax and that's why the tax bills in January and April have a different amount than in September and October, because September and October, I'm sorry, Jan June, July and October are based on an estimated amount of tax rate, and then the recap's done, and then we collect the last two bills collect the remainder of the money we need to meet the, our levy requirement. Because I know the select board is always um, talking to the assessor about the tax rate in November, about whether we want a separate business tax rate, because that's when the assessor's doing the recap. Right. No more questions? Yep, I got one. Oh. When you started your original presentation, Am I correct in you saying that we are at $45,000 under the levy limit with the projected budget? Correct. Um, uh, let me go back to the number. 62000 Is that with a budget of 10.482 million, we were projecting about $62,000 of levy headroom. Though I will, levy headroom is a proxy for some things, and I would say I would focus more on the change in the operating budget and more specifically in the levy to understand the impact on your wallet and not the change in the levy headroom. They may correlate, but I think the, uh, the levy is the better and more accurate measurement. And we still don't and, and have time, just to be clear, the 6.92 for the max levy you have, that had, that, it changed from a couple of months ago. Some very early calculations I thought it's going to be close to the 7-2, right? Now it's 6-9. Well, I'm just a number, but I'm okay with it. But I just remember, Jeff, our earlier conversation about the levy was, I think, in the 7. I was looking at my notes, but I couldn't find it. 7-2 or 3. But, again, if this is the right number, this is the right number, and I'm good with it. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure where, where Kelly pulled her information from, but when Rory went through it, the numbers, uh, the revenue side went up. Okay. Yeah. So that These, that's, that's this, yes, this maximum there. levy number is based on numbers that Lori gave me. Okay. It's like I, I found a uh, I, I found a minor error in there, and we corrected it. And I I'm expecting that this is uh, something that she's solid with. Okay, good. No, that's yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, it was a, a two-step situation um, between Kelly and then you know, Lori. And Lori's numbers, you know, I believe, were accurate. Yeah. 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 I. I have faith in Lori's numbers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not always. Maybe. I can't say she's always perfect, but usually is. Yep. Okay. Any other questions on the operating budget? All right, ward articles. So um, the operating budget is funded through taxes, through the through operating money. With the ward articles, we have other funding options. So we have free cash. We, we can fund a warrant article to raise and appropriate, which means it affects the tax, affects your tax bills. We can fund a warrant article through free cash. What happens is at the, uh, at the end of fiscal year 23, the accountant closed the books. There were some accounts with extra money. There were a few accounts that needed a little bit more money. When all the accounts that needed extra money had money put into them, we still had some money left over and effectively comes out as free cash. Uh, so at it, this year 23 ended and we have certified free cash of $544,480. $490, excuse me. My screen is at just the right angle where I glasses, I need different glasses to read it. We can also fund through debt or we can transfer money from other accounts. And so 
What I've done is I have split the warrant articles up and I'm going to go over them by funding source. So we're go I'm gonna review all the free cash funded articles and then the transfer articles. And there was a debt one on there, but I'm one, uh, is, is the backhoe still on the warrant or did you guys take that off? We took it off. Took it off? All right, then I, it's in my presentation, but I will not talk to it if that's, if that's not going to be in, brought up to the floor. So, and we have to keep a running track of our free cash because if we have 544,000 and change, we can't allocate $600,000 of free cash. It doesn't exist. We have to stay within our means. And so these are, these are all in order that they will appear in the warrant. The, uh, the number is based on the working numbers that we have. The final number in the warrant book may be different, but I had to put it there so that the uh, advisory and the select board members would know which one I'm talking about so they can tell me which one I made a mistake on. Right. And then, does anyone need me to walk us through them or do we just want to, want me to give you a minute and if there are any questions, you can ask about them. I like that one better. Me, me talk, I talk less. <laughs> that's, that's Sarah, warrant. don't nod your head so much, please. I'm sorry, Herb, go ahead. Those are the warrants and stuff that you're saying that's on there? The, the, these are, yes, these, these are all warrant articles. They, they don't have all the verbiage that's going to go in there. Yeah. I've just tried to capture what, Who's requested, who's sponsoring it, and what we're doing. And the thought was, if you need more information, that's what we're here for. Yeah. What's the, uh, why are we buying gravel for private roads? Um, the intention is that the gravel for private roads is, if that is needed, the, the gravel can only be used when a, when a resident petitions the town and the select board authorizes it. This is something that we started last year. Uh, I don't believe um, anyone has did anything with it last year. And so, and maybe the other members of the select board can remind me, I think the intention was that if a road became diffi difficult to, to be passed, that it was, there was some interest in the town in making it up, in providing some material to help, the, help, them, rep help them repair. Beth? So and I don't remember who pointed it out to us. A couple of years back, it was pointed out that our usual and customary behavior of voting $1 to allow the, plow the plowing of public roads really didn't accomplish what the intent was. So the intent was to enable us to do whatever minimum maintenance is required in order for them to be EMS accessible. Uh, and in order to do that legally and to use any materials at all on those roads, if if the if the all of the abutters requested assistance in doing that minimum maintenance that we had to vote actual materials associated with supporting those citizen requests and since the town meeting authorized us to spend those materials that gives us the right to use those materials in the interest of public safety yeah. And the, and the procedure was that it, that the abutters on the road, I believe they all had to request, and then they had to petition the select board, and then the select board had to make a determination that this was in the public interest to allow those materials to be used. And so this, it's not, it's not like we're leaving the bin of gravel, hey, come and get it if you need to fix your road. So I have a private road at my house. You guys are gonna come over and take care of it for me? What, the one down the hill below the trailer? Yeah. Uh, no, because there's there's no public interest in repairing it. <laughs> <laughs> Next, so there are well, designated the private roads in town <laughs> which are, um, I believe, there's I think the number is nine that are uh, fall fall into the criteria of a public road, meaning that there has to be more than I believe three residents on it, Correct. and it has to be able to be turned around. It can't be one way in, one way out. Mm -hmm. And and you mentioned that it had, none of that had been used last year. Ryan Ryan was hesitant to do any work on any of the private roads. Yeah, I believe the expectation was that as part of the petition, the select board would request the abutters uh, to um, 
There's a whole to, process, to agree to some kind state, of waiver, yeah. There's a whole state requirement process for that right. to occur, and they have and to the meet all of those. Used to do that in October, uh, sign that waiver on a, in October. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, I'll be honest, sir. When, when we reviewed this, when when I was on the the board and we talked about this, I this was one of the things I said: Do we really need to do it? And the and the and the point was, we've done it one year. It's spring. The work may be getting done this spring, especially now that we have a new highway super. And so, if it doesn't get used another year, I'll probably be on town floor voting against it. I, you know, usually there's enough material left there on the edge of the road and stuff. All that has to be done is brought back into the road, mm -hmm. regraded, and compacted. And if, the, and if the highway super can do that without materials, then that's well, then that's okay. They've done it for years, so okay. I'm, they shouldn't have to add I'm, materials. I'm a, I'm a computer guy, not a highway guy. Yeah. Uh, Rich. Well, I would say, Herb, I've watched you put asphalt grindings down on some private ways in town, particularly over where Ken Cleveland lived, uh, on one of the lanes down uh, off of Allen Road. So I'm a firm believer that Someone that lives on a private road is paying the same tax rate that I'm paying on a public way. And as long as it's not just one or two houses, on a, like we used to plow a couple private ways that was one house, well, that came to an end quite some time ago. However, some of these private ways have multiple homes on them. And I, I'm a firm believer that we need to do something for them, particularly down on Forest Ave, uh, right after the condos. There's quite a few homes there. That road is deplorable. If the ambulance had to go down there, they could they could break a leaf spring going down there. That's how bad it is. So I, I agree with you 100% on that. It, and they're paying the same tax rate that you or I pay on a public way. So I believe if we have a process, and it's not a lot of money, $3,000, those residents are paying the same rate the rest of us are. So I, I think it's something that's well-deserved. We don't plow them like we plow the public ways. We're only giving them $3,000 throughout the whole community if they ask for it and they have their neighbors ask for it collectively. So I think it should stay. And I would make an argument to keep it. And I hope, I, I know some of the residents have been asking. And because of a shortage on the highway department, it never got done. But Forest Avenue is deplorable right now. And that's all Oak I have to say. Oak Ave. Oak Ave. Uh, yeah. Lakeside. Uh, yeah. Chestnut. Chestnut. I think. Che it's the worst. Chestnut is. It's the worst. It's, it's the Chestnut worst. is what I'm re referring to as Forest. It used to be Forest, and now it's okay. Chestnut. Yeah. yeah. So Chestnut's the worst right yeah, now. Yeah, I agree. That, and that's it. Used to be Forest, and, and now it's that worst. was done two years ago. Piaki did it. Yeah. Did it. And, it, and it's already gone where it's deplorable. Yeah. The road needs to be graded better than what it has been and compacted every year. They can do it two or three times a year. We own a grader. If you need a vibratory roll, rent one for the week and do it. You know? All right, any other questions? Uh, Marty. Yeah, Tom, could you explain the, the road reconstruction, the number 15? Hmm. Why, where are the Chapter 90 monies being used that they can't be used for that? I believe this is intended to, in addition to the Chapter 90 money, rather than, it's like, because we have roads that need a lot of help, and so therefore, we are putting some free cash into it to supplement the Chapter 90 money. Herb, you have a? Maybe I can answer that question a little bit better for him on that. Oh, please do. The road reconstruction's out there for the highway department. If they need coal patch, hot top, <laughs> if they need to fix pipe or whatever, that comes out of the road reconstruction. Chapter 90 money will not pay for a ton of coal patch or a ton of hot top. Chapter 90 won't, won't pay for that. That's what road reconstruction is for. Yeah. So Chapter 90 money is not usable for that, for the coal there's, patch? There's, for? Very, there's very explicit things that you can use Chapter 90 for. Right. Okay. And if it doesn't meet these very specific criteria from the state, a lot of the, the just patchwork does not meet the criteria to use chapter nine. Thank you. It's just uh, with, with Herb's answer, I, I thought some people might take it as it's not enough money to do that. And I want to make it clear. No, it's not that it's not enough money. It's that it is not allowed to be used for that purpose. Yeah, the work and it's that, a legal the, issue, not a. Yeah, the work doesn't qualify okay. for chapter nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Herb. 
right. And we've got more free cash articles. Number 33, is that a one-time $80,000 or is that an annual? And if it is, could you explain that point? Um, the town hall fire alarm is a, that is intended to be the installation of a fire alarm system and therefore I would consider it to be a one-time expense. I expect that within an alarm system there will be an ongoing operational expense to uh, have it, um, to have someone answer the call when it goes off, just like the, uh, the burglar alarm in the town hall. Because when those go off, it's like they, they would they would come to me until about a week ago. So, one time is the answer. I think is the answer. Thank you. Yep, Marty. Um, Article eighteen. Which building is twenty five thousand dollars going to be spent on? Is it just for the library, or does it also include eighteen county? Um, does anybody? I would. I. I remember you asked me this question. I remember my answer was, I be, from my read, I believe it was the library, but if someone has a copy of- I believe of, it was the annex, because it was with yeah. a painting it or yeah, something like yeah, that. I, yeah, she, she just sent, she just sent um, numbers over a little bit ago. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's roughly 20K to paint the annex. It's $3,000 for downspout related work on both buildings and another $2,000 for minor indoor yeah, repairs minor. in both buildings. Right. Okay. That's right. Um, is the article written so, in such a way yeah. that that is, um, that those expenditures are within the text of the article and the in, is stated intent? Because um, my recollection was that it was for the library repair in a place, which would imply the library building. And if it's going to be for something else, then we want to make sure the article is written compatible well, with the, our intended the, use. The article specifically says to the library building repair and maintenance account for maintenance and repairs of both two Lincoln Street and 18 Common Street buildings, including pest control remediation, uh, okay. or take any action relative there too. All right, thank you. Then that's that to me is clear enough. Yeah, it's pretty explicit. All right, and Marty, did that answer your question? Like yeah. All right, thank you. Articles. I'm glad that one is. And then uh, select board, I, I heard a t I heard you guys talking about sixty thousand dollars in free cash. Is that a stabilization transfer that I didn't catch on my list? No, the sixty thousand dollars was for the roof, the school roof. Oh, that's the one I missed. Yeah. I, I went I went with the last version. And, okay. Mm. All right. So, so. So that's why so, is that why you've got sixty six thousand? Yes, that is why I have so much. It's like okay, so. Error on my part, on the board, uh, there will be a, I should have caught that now that you mention it. Um, there will be an article in the ATM for transferring $60,000 from free cash to the capital stabilization account. Or is it the roof account? No, it's a roof account. So to the, to the so elementary school account. roof stabilization account. Because that problem's not going away and so we're going to keep putting money into it until to uh, be able to fix it, so that will be that will be in the warrant. Are there any questions on that? None. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, hazardous trees, fifty-five thousand. Yes. What have they done in the past few years for tree removal, and what are they spending? They've done a lot in the last six months, and I yeah. think it's almost six thousand. What are we paying per day? About eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred. Yeah, and that's eighteen hundred. Um, they provide all their own equipment, their own crew. Right. The highway department can go be doing other stuff while the tree crew is working. Sorry. Wait a minute. Herb, I didn't say they. No, I'll keep. I, I'm sorry. I'm. It's a. We go from eight hundred dollars a day for a tree removal to eighteen hundred dollars a day for um, tree removal now. Well, uh, when was it eight hundred dollars a day? That's what I was being charged before, because I was only hiring so, a guy in a bucket truck. Mm -hmm. And the highway workers, we, we help take care of the trees. Mm -hmm. I gotta agree with Herb on some of this. Uh, the fact that we're paying $1,800 a day, and now that we're staffed fully at the highway department, I question why we're not using them again now doing the tree work, now that we're fully staffed. So. I think that's something we need to look into a little further. So with that, I, with that I, said, I would say I would still, 
we're, we're pretty far behind in the trees. I'd keep it at 55, and if we can figure out a solution, it might help us get the get rest more of the trees, trees down. Mm -hmm. right. then, then we still fund it. You, at that you got 55 here, plus you got another uh, 15,000 on the uh, regular budget mm -hmm. for tree removal. So. Yes, and I will say that the uh, contract for $800 a day was a competitive bid process, <coughs> and I believe since it was over $50,000, I believe it went through a sealed bid process or with a formal proposal. Yep. And so, therefore, it's like it was the best price we could get. If some, I mean, if someone, if someone was out there willing to do it for less, or say I'll do it for twelve hundred if you provide a crew, it's like yeah, it, they they weren't interested in us. It no, was, it's that's why you got to work with the some of the smaller tree outfits that are you know one operator or whatever, and just hire the person in the bucket truck to take the trees down. You know. And pay pay the have the town remove the trees instead of paying them to remove all the wood from the mm -hmm. end of the road. No. <coughs> definitely, definitely something the board can look at. Marty. Okay, Tom, as of Lori's expenditure report five nine, there's still thirty seven thousand six hundred fifty dollars in the tree removal account. Okay, so there, there's there's still about so over thirty five thousand. Thirty seven thousand. Why would be Putting in fifty-five thousand dollars more still. Let's say that goes down to twenty-five thousand by the end of the fiscal year. Then we only have to put thirty thousand in. I mean, this fifty-five thousand is a ridiculous amount to put into that tree account. Um, I would I would say the we still have a backlog of over two hundred trees. If I recall correctly, it's at least two hundred dangerous trees that need to be removed. Um, also, my understanding is the contract with the tree removal service. Uh, according to the tree warden, the contract with the tree removal service was signed last summer and that it was not until late in the fall that we started getting slots. I would say, but I would say this should probably be discussed in more detail with the tree warden and who's be, in charge of And that. I would think because that, um, that bit was only for that 55000 So I would think when it comes to next year to that 55000 it's going to be a whole again. new bid. Yeah. Yeah, if the contract was structured so that it could only be fifty fifty five thousand dollars, and yeah, then we have to, to then we have to rebid it, or the additional money would have to be bid. Right. Okay. Anything else on the free cash? All right. And then we have transfers. Um, it's kind of a bit of a mishmash between where everything comes from, but I mean the the water department. Um, Don Taft, where does the where what funds the water department capital account? So we have or, um, the, the the water department surplus account. Excuse me. So the sur surplus money. There's an account for uh, surplus, and we transfer it to our operating for um, operating expenses. But, but where does the money that where does this, that money in the surplus account come from? So if we if we have. Uh, you know, it's, so if we take in more than we spend, it goes into the surplus account. Okay. That's expenses only. So they don't fund their salaries from that. So the that water surplus that he's talking about is strictly expense account, if I remember correctly. Well, salaries come out of that. No. Because, Don, no. your... The, the water department employee salaries and the water department operating expenses are on the town budget, which to me would imply that the revenues go are part of local receipts. Yeah, and so if they're local receipts, they, they would not go into the surplus account. So I'm so I, I I'd be curious to know what where the, the surplus account is funded from or what its source of funding is. Revenues taken in that, that uh, above and beyond the expenses. Okay. All right. So, in other words, if I'm going to use round numbers again, if the water department had a hundred thousand dollar operating budget and it took in a hundred ten thousand dollars of revenue in fiscal year, then ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars would go into general revenue and the ten thousand dollars above and beyond the operating expenses would go to the water department surplus account for the water department's use okay that's that makes sense okay 
And so, and then it makes sense that you guys can, that you guys are asking to pull some of the money out of the surplus in order to fund capital expenditures. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And so, again, all these transfers are not from any, are, are not from, are not affecting our tax rate, I think is the fair thing to say. The ambulance expenses and wages, um, the ambulance gets, the ambulance squad gets paid for going out on calls. They're, all the money they earn goes into a dedicated in, uh, ambulance receipts account, and then the money is transferred out of that to cover their operating expenses. Um, for 2024, they are, they are concerned they're going to have a shortfall near the end of the year, so they've asked us to put an article in here and um, Shortly before town meeting, they'll tell us if they're going to need to use that or if we'll be able to pass it over in town meeting. But again, that's, that will be funded out of ambulance receipts and not out of uh, the town tax money. Um, fire station repairs, we've identified a number of older warrant article accounts that have served their purposes. And rather than letting them be dissolved and having their money flow into next year's free cash, we said, why don't we grab the money now and repurpose that money into a fire station repairs account. And that way, as the fire, if work needs to be done on the fire station, there's some money that can do that. Cable TV, that's to buy the equipment and software and such to, uh, to run the cable TV station. I believe we are very close to getting the Brookfield Community Media TV station back up. Jacob keeps telling me that. No, no, that comes from, from the peg account. Account. Right. Um, The uh, O32 second floor accessibility improvements. Um, the select board voted at the time to take the money that we had allocated for a platform lift and repurpose that or put that into account instead intended for accessibility improvements. Uh, the board is looking into the possibility of putting an elevator in to service the first and second floor. I think the uh, board was finding that the platform lift was not something that was going to be achievable at a reasonable price. And so, rethinking it. Well, yes. the, the platform lift was a temporary measure which was approved by the state as an interim until you've got uh, a, an elevator. So, mm -hmm. the platform lift had like seven years uh, time as an interim. Oh, it, after seven years, it would no longer cover us for uh, yeah, accessibility so purposes? It took six years to get to where we're at now. So oh. <laughs> rather than spending the money on a platform lift, it mm -hmm. into the, the elevator. Yeah, it's, it's, it did not have a, it, it no longer had a long enough useful life, Correct. even if we could get it in. Correct. Yeah, and so yeah, and the elevator makes, if we're going to do something, an elevator is the appropriate long-term solution. I don't think I don't think that's enough money to put an elevator in. All right. Uh, let's see. Technology upgrades. Um, that's uh, the town needs a new. We are investigating a new town website, and we and some computer capital acquisitions. The UPS. I, I believe the UPS needs new battery, and that isn't cheap. And the current vendor for our town website is um, giving us, as we say in sales, go away pricing where they're no longer interested in serving the smaller towns. And so we need to identify a new vendor and migrate the town website over to that new vendor. I believe we have until the end of the calendar year to do that. Correct. But, uh, Brad? Correct. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then Narcan and... Have we decided an amount for Narcan? <coughs> no. No? Okay. All right. And then roof, sta and then roof, sta I found roof stabilization, Beth. No, I, that, that, Marty, that's an old, that, that's, that's, that's my bad. It's an old number. And so I will, uh, I will verbally correct that. The, um, the roof, sta the, originally the plan was to uh, transfer some money uh, from one of the other stabilization accounts to roof stabilization and um, the board decided to take a different tact, and now we're gonna be putting, as mentioned earlier, we're gonna be getting $60,000 into, from free cash into roof stabilization. Are you saying 40 is like that? 
For, uh, well, we're putting in 75 and 60. No, 40, 40 what, what I'm calling 40 will change. And instead of being 75, a $75,000 transfer, it will be a $60,000 allocation from free cash. Okay. There will be one article for roof right. stabilization. So this, this will go for it. It, it will move to the uh, it would move to the free cash section, Marty. When that happens, and that's it. Since we're not doing the backhoe. Tom, I don't know what the sign says. You do a great job. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. I've always been internally motivated. So is the advisory committee now going to join the selectmen in the remainder of their meeting? Um, I would, I don't know. I'm done talking. I think everyone's done hearing me. I would ask direct that question to the select board and advisor. Well, thank you for coming in to do this. Uh, uh, you're, you're welcome, Rich. Hey, I, got, I had fun doing the sunburst chart. That was fun. <laughs> Did you say these are available? Uh, there are handouts over there. But I didn't want you seeing them until I got to put them up on the board and got to talk to them. Did you get one of these? Yeah, I got one between the two. Anybody else? I made them all up. Oh, you did? Okay, because we have to go through the rest of the... Oh. And then I'll send that to you guys. Yeah. So, do you want a rapid fire? It, just make motions and we, or actually the first one we got to do is the ARPA money allocation. Uh, from my understanding, we have to rescind uh, 70000 because we allocated originally 170000 for the... All right, so we allocated 170,000 for town hall upgrades and repairs, and I think we're only using 100,000 for uh, upgrades and repairs, so we have to rescind 70 of that. Does that make sense to you? It does. So was the opera money able to be used for the elevator? We could have. We had enough. We had enough. Yeah. Is there any balance left for, for ARPA? So uh, we're we're rescinding 70. 70k in order to have it to do the uh, insulation on the police station because they had a they had moisture basically degrade all of their insulation. <coughs> so and it has to be spent on a certain time period. So I think one of the reasons why. We weren't allocating. I think we have until the end of this year to yeah, allocate. It has to be encumbered by the end of this year. Right, it has to be encumbered by the end of this year, and I think we didn't trust that we would get the elevator in time. on the books in time, unless it, it was a primary focus on it. Because we had such a, I mean, we allocated the money for the for the platform lift, and we got ghosted by three different contractors. And was never able to implement it because of that. And I mean, literally, Al Jones went up to New Hampshire to go find one and had gone out of business. Yeah, he told me. And I think we originally had a million or something like that. Yeah. And I don't know where it all. A lot of it was gone before I was on the board. A lot of it went to Central Street. Right. Then, That's right. The three hundred thousand of it went to finish the Central Street. In, in Green Street. In Green. Well. Or no. No, there was another, what, was there a water project that used a bunch of water? Half a million there of water. Was, yeah, there was it a was. Yeah. That was that article that the, looking for $54,000 for Green Street, which they kept saying was paving. But that contract was was under budget. So, and, and part of that I thought was coming from uh, ARPA money. Was that not on the... Uh, that was article? not. That, that was not on the article. No, it wasn't. And I don't think it was. Why is that missing? Do we actually owe the fifty-four thousand, or do we not? So I've a contract two. was signed for a set amount right. with a percentage uh, from a grant 
and opera money. The contract was signed. It's under budget. And yet they were saying that there's fifty-four thousand dollars for paving. It's an it's a counting issue. And I think Kelly must have done something. I don't know what happened. So that may be with that seventy grand should go back to that account. Yeah, I think Lori was trying to figure it out. So do again, do we in your opinion, do we owe the fifty four thousand to the contractor or do we not? It's so my understanding it, they're asking. It, it is owed to the that is, it is owed. That is owed to the contractor. The money that contract was signed the <coughs> breakdown of where the money was coming from. And I believe the APA money wasn't there. I, I don't know. It, I don't know what happened. It's un, it was under budget, but it was a contract for the project with the money designation there. It hasn't been overrun. It hasn't been added expenses. It's under budget. So somewhere the contract administration of the finances needs to be straightened out because there was an article in the warrant for an additional 54,000 or whatever the number was. Yeah, actually they took that article out and the, and the additional 54,000 for paving at Green Street is going in. I, I can't hear you, but. I'm sorry. The additional 54,000 is in the road reconstruction money and he, he had the wrong number on the road reconstruction. I just realized he had the wrong that, number in the This should not be a request for extra money. The money was already there. No, this is an accounting game, I think, is all we're doing. I think we had the money. I just think she didn't factor the ARPA right. I forget what she did. Lori has a whole explanation for it. Yeah. If you look at the contract, it yeah. said what the percentages were. Yeah. So that was the town's percentage of the contract is what the problem is, because most of it was grant money. Most of it was grant money, that right. was correct. And the other, I believe, was ARPA money. I, I look at the contract. It says that's what the, yeah, you, I can't, think that, you can't sign the contract without having the funds. The, funding the funds were there, and now they're not. Is this your pen? That's the way. That's the way I understand. Hold on, I'm gonna try to pull it and figure it out. I think you put your lower. Because the water department was surprised when when the article appeared and it said the water department, and the highways department support this. Or you know, it doesn't. Okay, like, here we go. So Dennis, thank you. After reading your emails below, I remember exactly what happened here. And this is coming from Lori. Okay, so after the emails were sent last year regarding allocating the additional funds needed for Green Street out of ARPA, it looks like we may have allocated them. My chart says culvert project on one line and mass works on another, but regardless, both those allocations were subsequently rescinded by the board. So this is where we are now. You have no ARPA funds left to allocate this. You have allocated all but 14000 and I don't even think I have the right amount allocated for the police station since one note says only for engineering costs of 18000 The other says for the full project of 82000 My amount only includes 18000 You have to fund this from the annual town meeting article, whether it is a standalone paved Green Street article or put funds into roads account, my suggestion. Uh, there are no other funds available. So, so what's what's this what's this seventy thousand dollar ARPA fund? I think this is just us cleaning up the ARPA fund because we actually never officially rescinded the seventy thousand. Okay. From the town hall. Right. So we originally allocated, I think, one hundred and seventy thousand for the town hall work. Was that for insulation? Is that what she was talking about? Was that the insulation thing? No, I think that was, I think that they, originally they were looking at doing um, storm windows. And we also thought the painting was going to be a lot higher than what it was. Right. I think the painting was originally estimated at like 90000 and we ended up getting it for like 40000 So is this seventy thousand dollars of money still available? I don't, I don't think it's available. I think we're just cleaning up the minutes. Okay. 
Yeah. And if you want to check with Lori. Yeah. I, she had do you want me to forward this to you? Yeah. Do you, do you I, get us? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, if you could see. Yeah, I'll, yeah actually. I'll, I'll, I'll just email with everyone. Yeah. So, Rich, to answer your, your question, yes, that money is owed no, to the county. No, 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 no. When is it due back? When the paving you know, happens? I'm they, sorry? When is it due? Is it, are they looking like, for it now? or They, they haven't paved yet. They haven't done the final paved. paving. Okay. Okay. I mean, we'll probably have a meeting next week if you just want to pass over it. I don't really care. <laughs> you know, I, let's let's pass over it and get the list from because the last time Lori had this, she actually provided us a breakout of what ARPA funding had been voted to which projects. I don't we can have get that a full copy with me. Of it. Yeah, I prefer okay. to do that when we have a full accounting of what's gone where. So I will put for an agenda item. I think the ARPA. same thing happened on Central Street. With the ARPA. Yeah, there was a, bu a bunch of confusion over what Co got voted correct. when right. on Central Street. So um, we need to get that on paper. Sounds like we're down to one kid up there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I think it is just right. One little kid in the corner. Kids going to the NBA. Okay. That's all we're going to get on here. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Great. All right. Uh, advisory committee liaison. Who wants to jump on that? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it's me. You, it's it's yeah. you or me, right? <laughs> um, I'll take it. You want it? I don't want it, but I'll do it if Beth's, you if you, if you have you ever been on the advisory committee? I have not. Beth uh, has. I'm, I'm so I, I would say I have Beth. You are. Are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So you build uh, me out, I owe you. Yeah. So if you want to make the motion, I'll second it. I'll make the motion, Beth, is a new advisory committee liaison. Second. Uh, any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, request from Agricultural Committee for a tractor parade at 11 a.m. on Saturday, May 25th. I'm going to make a motion that we approve the um, tractor parade request. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, request from Congregational Church for the use of the town hall for rain venue during vacation Bible study, July 22nd to the 26th. So, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, request from Tip Top Steering Committee to use the town hall 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday, June 8th. I'll make a motion to allow the Tip Top Steering Committee to use the Town Hall for Saturday, June 8th. So, how do we... Why don't you second and then we'll second. discuss it. Okay, discussion. I usually open it for them since I live okay. next door to it. Perfect. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I don't have anything that weekend that I have to be at, so... Okay. Uh, police officer appointment, Patrick... Clement, um, the chief said he wasn't able to come tonight, nor was in the other, in this Patrick Clement is working, but this is making up for the one down officer they have. Well, if the chief, chief recommended him, I'll make a motion that we appoint Patrick Clement. Did, do we have a, a probationary period, or how do we that's all generally? You, you, that's all governed by the union, I believe. So, um, there's something on the contract. But I don't think it's a true probationary period. I think what happens is their first appointment is for one year. Okay. And then after that, it's like a three-year appointment, then a five-year appointment, and then like Yeah, right. Okay. Yep. So I'll make a motion that we appoint Patrick Clement for a one-year position on the Brookfield Police Department as a patrolman. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Uh, ZBA alternate member appointment, Joseph Lervier Sr. I'll make a motion that we appoint. Oh, let me back up. How, how, what do we typically do for appointments on that? How are they one, two, or three year appointments? Typically alternates are one year, and though with town meeting so close, I think we want to specify that the appointment is through um, the end of FY25. 25. 25. Yeah. So I'll make a motion that we appoint Joseph the Riviere Senior to the as a ZBA alternate member to July of fiscal year 25. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Cultural Council appointment, Sean Mulligan. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Sean Mulligan to the Council Con Cultural Council. I'm guessing that's a three year appointment. Or is that? I think that's probably going to. Would that be the same thing where he goes to the rest of the year? Because um, then we usually just spread We're going to do a bunch of appointments all at the end of June. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I was going to say, I, I kind of I gave Karen the heads up that we're going to have to start to compile that list because you don't want to save that for one night usually. No. Okay. Um, so how do you want So to? I think in, in that case, let's let's just, for the sake of an offset, let's, let's appoint Sean through the end of next year, even though typically I think it's a longer appointment than that. But that'll offset him from some of the other members. So moved. But so Second. June 30, 2025? 25. And Council on Aging appointment, Linda Lincoln. I'll make a motion that we appoint Linda Lincoln to the Council on Aging for a term of, you want to go June of 25 as well? Or do you want to do a three year? How, I, I'm just unfamiliar how you've done those in the past. I thought typically they're spread out. I, they, so. Well, they, they have rotational, so without having in front of us what the other what the other members, what schedule the others are on, I would go either to 2025 or 2026. I'll say till July of 2026. Okay, second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, do we want to talk about these other two things again, or do we need to? The stipend policy and the longevity payments. I think we kind of we're going to need to talk about them soon. We, but I think right. we actually pretty. I think we covered the stipend policy one pretty thoroughly yesterday. What was the resolution? Unless, unless, on that? unless we're, we want to. Did you want to? Did that. you want to change it to people getting paid monthly? Again? Is that what it was? No, no. I don't. I don't want to change it to monthly. I. I but I didn't understand why we went two months beyond when the annual town election was. I think where we landed was we wanted to reach out to Lori to find out why people were hearing that the payments were going to be September instead of July. Oh, right. So I think all we need is, clear Ron, could you just get clarification from Lori about whether that's going to get paid in yeah, July? I, I, I've already September. got on my, that on my Lori list. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, so I, that was the only thing left over from that. And, and then the long, then we, we got the note about the longevity payment for former town employees. So we, in the fall, we had voted to have somebody who was retiring get their full longevity, even though they retired during the year. So I think for the classification of employees retiring, I think we need to include them in the longevity payments generally. But I think we do probably want to specify that for people that are just leaving that, that left we would prorate it or not at all? I don't think we do it at yeah, all. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So, yeah. so I think there's fundamentally a difference in class Big. between people that re retire after you know 30. Years yeah, right. And people yeah. That but like yeah. Don and particularly after but Don and Al after 34 years, yeah. right? But, but and Don like and Al will get Eric it. that walked away because he didn't like the fact somebody else wound, wound up getting promoted doesn't need to get it. Right, I agree. Or got a better opportunity. Yeah, you so it's going to be if you're retired, you're getting full or prorated? I would say full. 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 It's full. Just so you get the full year. So even if you so, retire September 1st, so at least you're this get the year, full year, we may want to revisit it for future years. But for this year, earlier in the year, we made we voted to um, <coughs> pay the full longevity for somebody who was retiring in September. Mm -hmm. We have another individual who's retiring in June. Yeah. Obviously, that person should get treated the same as the person that left in September. Sure. <clears throat> now, I think it might be worth revisiting. I agree. After that, to say, 
perhaps it makes more sense to prorate it even if they're retiring, mm -hmm. right? But since we voted one that way for this year, we need to be consistent and everybody gets treated the same. Yeah, because mm -hmm. what I, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, no, I was gonna say, what, what I got out of Michelle's legal opinion, if you will, is because the Warren article was so vague it really made it, anyway. a pol yeah, it made it a policy decision for the board. Yep. So I would say, yeah, what we do is, I agree, after the fact, you know, maybe in, in July, board we gets together and says, okay, this is our policy, and we well, don't have to worry about well, it. Well, I, I think we could touch on it right now. We don't have anyone else coming down the line for retirement that I'm aware of. And I would like to say, from this point on, we'll prorate it. I wasn't a selectman when you guys agreed to pay him for the full year, even though he retired in September. <coughs> but like you say, we got another one, so I think we should treat it the same, but we have nothing else in the pipeline that I'm aware of that's anyone gonna retire. Right. So from that, from at, from this point on, I think we should prorate it. What about, well, no, I guess it wouldn't be. I was thinking like, Don, I'm trying to think of who would retire, like Donald Flutter, but she's under that EMS thing. Right. So that's. Definitely. I'm not aware of any other public uh, employees that are. I mean. I'd rather not make a knee jerk reaction at 8 30 at night after we go through the budget. I'd prefer to go through the full, like, longevity policy and really talk well, about the full thing rather uh, than I, just make that I decision. I agree because I, I think we also Is that need fair? to. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So, but I also think we need to talk about in that longevity policy part-time versus full-time yeah so and what's interesting though is it's going to part of it is also going to depend on how it shakes out with the bylaw change that is called out by the citizens petition that's on the floor right so um because article 49 that's on the warrant amends the personnel bylaw adds language relative and and it does not differentiate between regular full-time and part-time employees for years of continuous service right mm -hmm. and they get the same amount regardless of their status right. okay which i think is wrong to begin with mm -hmm. right if, that's what i'm right if, if if somebody works like 50 percent of a full-time person they should get 50 percent of the stipend of a full-time person right okay. that's just that's just what makes sense. I mean, I think the intent now, was good. Oh. I agree that the intent intent right. was good. Well, you know, the intent was whatever the intent was, right? So, um, but, oh. you know, once it's on, here's the thing, though. Once the bylaw is on the books, right, it's basically effective for a year. If we want to make a modification to the bylaw, then we make the modification to the bylaw at that point. So that's one of the reasons why I don't want to have a policy discussion right now, because whether or not we even have the authority to it make that determination. At the town meeting. Right. It could be overruled at the town meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, it is it is silent on um, proration, like what happens if the person is not employed at the end of the fiscal year, right? So even the bylaw language that's in there, and I think once that's either on the books or not on the books, then we can see, is, is that modify it? And then, then it becomes a consult issue with KP to say, hey, if it's the bylaw, but the bylaw is silent on prorating for people who are not employed at the end of the year, is it an all or, that, has it now become an all or nothing thing? Or is it a select board policy decision about what to do about folks that aren't employed? I think if we amend the article and we had something ready for it. <coughs> That's the to, other option, right? It would be I mean, a better if, way to if do we it. Wanna, I mean, it is a citizen's petition, but you can amend we can it on amend the floor. It. That's right. And I, and I think if we talk about like our time, full-time how it works prorated I, I think we should almost have to, that do you ready. want me to bring proposed language to the next that would meeting be great right and and well so when do you want to do we're meeting next week i don't know if we're gonna have enough time. i mean we really need to go through the police thing i think next week mm -hmm. i don't know if we should add anything else I, to that. I i i would trust beth to prepare that and we don't, no, we, I don't well, what know I would do we, is I would put some language together and probably throw it at KP with y'all's permission just yep. to make sure that what I do, do doesn't 
get us into some sort of bylaw jail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and then they'll be here the night of the yeah. town meeting, and, yeah. we can, and we can just do we it. We can as a hone in on it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, it'll be keeping in the intent, because right, yeah. any yeah. any amendment has to be in keeping with the intent of the original and, motion. And I think we. Are, I yeah. think if we foundationally, if I think if we keep the starting point the same, but add some of the specific language about how it gets handled if somebody's not employed and. And that part time gets you know gets prorated based on their equivalent of a full time employee. I think that that would be reasonable language to try to incorporate. Yeah. And I think it makes for a compelling argument on town floor, right? To be able to explain the pro proration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So someone who may actually be against it because they said, you know, why on earth are we giving part timers the longevity same. pay? They might it might actually sway people to vote for it. Agree. Mm -hmm. yep. So. So, so if you don't want it in place, we might be doing ourselves a disservice by, by bringing it. But if we're going to have it, well, I'd rather I'd rather propose something that makes sense than just leave it to the, to the way it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, or the floor, because then it really becomes a mess if we're not ready for it. So do you want to set up, do you want to look at your calendars for the week of the 27th? Um, for another meeting for... Right. To handle stuff like, like this. this Thursday is good for me. So you want Thursday the, at seven? The thirtieth. I don't have a good yeah. calendar with yeah. me, so if that's what it yeah. is, I'm good with that as long as Beth is good. Thursdays are usually good for me. Is yeah. seven better than six fifteen? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Neither are good. <laughs> We might as well start earlier because I certainly don't want to go any later. Yeah. All right. So. So 6:30. 6:30. Yeah, would be safer. Okay. Just because I sometimes don't get off all my calls until nearly six. So. Fair enough. So 6:30, yeah. the 30th. Yeah. <coughs> And I forgot we were over here, so I was walking. And I'm up at around 4.30, yeah. 5 o'clock, so I fade off quick towards the sun. <laughs> so that's it? I think so. That's it. You guys good? I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye.